Yeah, now I've done it. The overhaul of B is going to continue with the addition of Dave Ferreira's Pro Head Mech. And what you see here are just about all of the parts that are going to be needed for that. Uh, what is the Pro Head Mech? Well, basically everything you see there from B, with the exception of that lower ring, is going to be replaced. Um, the mechanism is definitely what I would consider to be next level. Um, as you see here, we've got some custom cut aluminum parts. There are some CNC machine parts that are going to be uh, eventually making their way here. Um, it, the entire mechanism is, is changed, um, including a slip ring, so his head can turn 360 degrees. Um, it uses much higher end components. And uh, I really felt that I could use this as sort of my test bed, um, the last step before I tackle my next droid. Um, so uh, there already is a series of assembly videos that Steven Sloan released just not long ago. He goes into great detail about the assembly process. So I'm not going to try and replicate that. But what I am going to do is, as I go through the assembly process, uh, when I come across little uh, details or things that are either aren't covered in his video or maybe were unique to me, uh, I'll be sure to uh, kind of highlight that as I go. Um, so real quick though, in addition to uh, all of the aluminum parts, which is a little bit new for me, um, we're using a lot of heat set inserts that will make assembly a lot easier. Um, also will make disassembly a lot easier as well. You'll notice that he is getting an entirely new upper body section. And you can see there, there are cutouts and cable pass-throughs for uh, speakers as well as the LED risers. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of a lot of overall improvements um, and uh, enhancements to the uh, to the mechanism. So uh, let me clear all this stuff out and get to work assembling this thing. So the first part of the assembly is the Lazy Susan. Uh, much like the Lazy Susan for R2's dome, the outer ring of the Lazy Susan is fixed. It's the inner ring or inner race that actually rotates uh, that this plate is attached to. Um, a motor will uh, drive a gear that will just spin the whole thing around. Uh, there's a lot of prep work required for the Lazy Susan. Uh, now you can repurpose the Lazy Susan that is part of the stock B2 build that's up at the top of his head, uh, but you do need to drill um, new holes, eight holes on the outer race, and then six holes need to be tapped on the inner race. Um, as for the uh, slip ring itself, uh, Senring manufactures different varieties of slip rings uh, in the videos from Steven Sloan as well as uh, Michael McMaster's build. They used a uh, taller version of the slip ring that had 12 conductors. This is just a six wire slip ring. Uh, so this one sits a little bit lower than, uh, than what you might see in other videos. Uh, as a result, uh, there's this 3D printed part that we'll be placing over top. Um, I modified this so that this little sidewall uh, reaches down or is, is taller so that it, it, it rests on top of the uh, slip ring. The stock part uh, is obviously set up for a much taller slip ring. Um, but overall, so far, this is going together really nicely. Um, so let's uh, keep going. I think it is also worth mentioning that uh, as far as these aluminum pieces from Sen Cut Sen go, um, this plate in particular is is crucial. I don't know that you could replace this with a 3D printed part and have it be rigid enough to hold all of the weight for everything else. Uh, likewise for this bottom plate here, um, this does provide a lot of the rigidity for, for everything um, that's going to be sitting on top of it. So. Um, yeah, I really do feel like you need to get these pieces made from aluminum. Uh, there's a spacer for the lower ring um, that most definitely could be replaced with a 3D printed part as well. Uh, 
Uh, probably also this little spacer plate uh, that mounts, that the motor uh, mounts to, uh, could potentially be 3D printed. You could make it a little bit thicker if you needed to. Um, but the other pieces, though, I definitely um, see the benefit for having them made out of aluminum. Uh, it's just going to give you the, the rigidity and the, and the strength that you really need for this mechanism. One other quick note about tools used. Uh, if you are new to tapping like I was, do yourself a favor and make sure that you get spiral tipped taps. Almost all of the holes that you're gonna be tapping on this project are through holes. And when the tap has that spiral cut to it, it pushes all of the shavings uh, and, and shards of metal down through the hole. So you don't have to worry about gumming up the, the, the threads of your tap and having to keep backing out uh, as you go. And that definitely makes things a lot easier. And then finally, um, because we are tapping as small as M2.5, uh, be mindful of the shank size of the taps that you get and make sure that you get a tap handle that's small uh, or that goes small enough to be able to hold it. This larger tap handle uh, couldn't hold these smaller taps, so I had to end up getting a, a second smaller tap handle to handle the small size. So just uh, keep that in mind when you're shopping for tools. All right, well, this is about as far as I'm going to get today. Um, as you can see, I've done most of the uh, upper tilt uh, assembly. Unfortunately, I was missing a couple of parts. Despite my efforts, I should have ordered two packs of these seven millimeter spacers. I only ordered one. So instead of six, I only had four. So uh, I'll have to do that um, another time. As for the, the lessons learned, um, again, I'm not gonna dive into the step-by-step -step for that. Uh, I'll put a link to Steven's video series in the description so you can see exactly how everything goes together. Um, by far, the, the trickiest part was getting the Lazy Susan mounted correctly. Uh, I do not have a drill press to drill through the Lazy Susan. Um, so things didn't line up exactly perpendicular, but they were, they were close enough that with a little bit of finessing and a little bit of uh, coaxing, I was able to get everything uh, securely installed. No problems there. Um, overall, it, it works really well. You can see you've got the motor. Uh, with the sonic hub uh, driving the gear that's going to turn the whole assembly. I mentioned uh, earlier about using only a six wire slip ring uh, versus a 12 wire slip ring and uh, let me explain my rationale for that. Um, my goal or my uh, approach on this is going to be to have a dedicated RC receiver in the head. So the only thing and I can do that because the Go Build a Motor Driver here uh, actually has a built-in uh, six volt back. So uh, it's intended to be able to power a receiver uh, alongside it. So my goal then is to simply pass power up through the slip ring, power the receiver here. Uh, the receiver then will be able to drive all of the servos and, uh, and yeah, I won't need to have any signal wires coming up here. Uh, there are some Wagos installed here, so the power will simply come through here, feed into these Wagos. Uh, on top of that, we have this uh, Castle Creations Beck. Um, this is simply Velcroed onto this, onto this cap here. This will sit on top, drop the voltage down to, I think 5.1 is typical for the reef servos, and then that will power the reef servos. Uh, in addition, we'll also have the 24 volts that will run out and power the motor controller, which will in turn run around to the motor itself. As for the servos and, and the receiver itself, I think what my plan is probably going to be is honestly, I'm just gonna Velcro the receiver right here. Um, and, uh, and then we have a little servo breakout board uh, that will fit right here. Uh, in Steven's videos, uh, and in the original uh, bill of materials for the Pro Head Mech, uh, Green Wave uh, makes or offers some similar uh, servo breakout boards, and I think, again, it's intended to fit right in here. So we'll be able to power voltage to the servo breakout board, the signal wires will go to the receiver, and then the servos themselves will plug right into there. So 
that's where I'm going to have to leave it for now. Uh, I do need to wait for the machine parts to arrive as well as the servos. I'm not going to wire anything up yet until I have everything uh, in position so I know exactly how everything is going to have to route together. But uh, overall, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I will be posting some additional updates uh, to discuss and show you guys some of the other things that I've done to be um, in the in the months since my last update. So um, anyway, thanks all for watching and I'll talk, talk to you next time.